Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stu again, and in this video, we're taking back the streets. We're not taking right of way leftovers, we're kicking car culture to the curb and requisitioning freeways for high speed rail. In this episode, we're taking aim at public enemy number one, Texas. In this case, it'll be Interstate 45 between Houston and Dallas. Texas anti-high-speed rail advocates like Texans Against High-Speed Rail have said projects like the proposed Texas Central Railway should stick to interstate rights of way, so we'll oblige them by taking the whole damn freeway. We're starting in Houston, Texas, fifth largest metro in the U.S., home of the Astros, Rockets, and Oilers, let's go. We're starting at the new Houston High Speed Rail Station in downtown Houston on the former Interstate 45 right-of-way. You heard right. I have deemed Interstate 45, which cuts downtown Houston and Buffalo Bayou Park in half, unfit to live. I have terminated the roadway and replaced it with high speed rail. Our station sits over Metro's Red Line light rail service for easy access to Houston's mass transit. We're also a block from a Greyhound station and there are some adjacent surface parking lots just dying to be redeveloped. Coming out of the station, things are slow at first, weaving around central Houston. You'll notice no road traffic in this section. That is because I closed the whole freeway here. Find some place else to drive. Things can remain slow at the intersection of Interstate 45 and Interstate 10, which can continue to exist. Houston has not one, not two, but three beltways and Interstate 45 interacts with all of them, starting with Interstate 610, about five miles from Houston's core. Interstate 45 through Greater Houston is bounded by persistent frontage roads, Texas style. Combined, these major intersections would greatly impede any mode other than vehicle traffic in the corridor. Lucky for us, we're putting trains on lanes and don't need to worry about it. Speed through Greater Houston would mainly be in the 110 to 125 mile per hour range due to the freeway's confined nature and near constant curving. The next beltway is Beltway 8. At 88 miles in length, this is the second longest ring road in the United States. The longest is, of course, also in Texas. You'll notice we've allowed traffic on half of our freeway here. We are not without mercy. On the northeastern quadrant of the I-45 Beltway 8 intersection is the dead as a doornail Greens Point Mall. That was so, so tempting as a station site, but at 15 miles, it's just too close to downtown Houston for this video. One more beltway to contend with, State Highway 99. Sadly, this may never become a full ring road, but as a beltway around the northern half of Greater Houston, it is massive at 176 miles in length and is said to be the only human structure visible from the moon. From there, Interstate 45 is free from major intersections to Huntsville, 40 miles to the north, but the frontage roads will continue. 15 miles north of there is Houston's far northern suburb of Conroe. This is about 40 miles out from Houston's core and has an expanding population of 115,000, so it's a reasonable first stop. By the way, we'll be comparing this freeway consuming route with the planned Texas Central Railway, which would be mostly new right of way. That route has one intermediate stop. As a result, Conroe will be our only stop, but we'll discuss others later. I have the station located a mile from Conroe's meager downtown next to BNSF tracks for a potential connection to places like Cleveland and College Station. There is some development potential to the immediate west. From Houston to Conroe, it is 40 miles. I have that taking 27 minutes for an average of 89 miles per hour with a conventional high-speed rail train. We'll discuss tilting when we get to Dallas. For now, let's continue on north out of Conroe. 10 miles further on near the town of Willis, Google Maps 3D building data goes away, so we will convert to 2D for a bit 
But first, this area will be the only part of I-45 straight enough for 200 mile per hour travel. I have that lasting about 5 miles here. Another 15 miles north is Huntsville. That has a population of 45,000 and is home to Sam Houston State University. This would be a viable stop in a more regionally focused high-speed rail route. Other cities in the same boat are Corsicana and Ennis, which are closer to Dallas. The three combined have a population of 100,000. Importantly, they're all on an interstate corridor and surrounded by developable land in a state that is set to grow massively in the coming decades. The route between Houston and Dallas metros is divided into three rough speed zones seen here, with speed getting progressively slower toward Dallas. The fastest of those is the smallest. The largest at 95 miles would be akin to a Sella, mostly ranging between 110 and 150 miles per hour. The slowest, more like regional rail, mainly between 90 and 125 miles per hour for roughly 70 miles. We pop back into the Google Maps 3D building data 15 miles from downtown Dallas on the edge of the metro at the city of Wilmer. Fairly industrial in nature with a rail yard and a bunch of warehouses. Closer into Dallas we encounter the Interstate 20 interchange. Interstate 20 helps form part of Dallas-Fort Worth's enormous current outer beltway. To the left, just beyond the large Amazon warehouse, is where the Texas Central right-of-way would enter the Dallas area. Another three miles north, we encounter Dallas's ring road, Loop 12. Texas Central would run between the freeway and the freight rail right-of-way on the left here. Speeds within the Dallas Metro would be about as fast as Houston, mainly in the 110 to 125 mile per hour range. Although from this particular vector, the distance into and out of the Metro is three times less than Houston to the north. Now on the fringes of downtown at the junction with US 175, we would cross over the freight rail right of way that Texas Central would parallel into its planned Dallas station site in the Cedars area on the south side of downtown. We'll talk more about this area in a bit. Since we are sticking to the interstate, we'll be able to drop our station in a more central location on the east side of the downtown financial district. This is at a junction for Dallas's light rail system DART with two stations nearby. You also have a large swath of land to the west waiting to be developed in addition to medium and high density housing already in the area. No traffic here either, this is another section of freeway I've deemed unnecessary. We'll take it back for rail, or to develop. Look on the bright side, you'll get to drive through the funnest looking intersection in the world instead. Pulling into our new Dallas High Speed Rail Station, we have traveled 240 miles. Same as the planned Texas Central, I have that taking 2 hours and 16 minutes for an average of 106 miles per hour. A tilting train would do that 13 minutes faster. Compare that to 90 minutes for Texas Central. 2 hours 16 minutes isn't bad, faster than I thought it would be. Maybe sticking with the freeway isn't such a bad idea. Perhaps that's more Brightline style than true high speed though. Let's take a look at that as an option. Our first problem is that Interstate 45 through Greater Houston would be difficult, expensive, and in some places bordering impossible. Those are all things Brightline doesn't want to hear. However, in the Houston area, there is another option, Union Pacific right-of-way between Houston and Conroe. This is conventional rail, so we'll toss electric aside and go with sets like the ones they use in Florida. Top speed in service, 125 miles per hour. For this version, our Houston station will be at the Burnett Transit Center on the other side of the bayou from downtown. This is a mile from the middle of downtown and the multimodal transit center plugs directly into area transit, including Redline light rail that runs directly through downtown. 
There is plenty of room for a station here and some nice development potential around the site. From there to Conroe is a busy freight corridor, but there is room for at least one additional track the entire way to accommodate passenger traffic. This could run as conventional 79 to 90 mile per hour passenger rail without any need for special crossings. We're just trying to get out of the Houston area. On the way, you'd have the possibility of a station near George Bush International, Loop 8, and Greens Point. Out to Conroe is an express, assuming a 90 mile per hour top speed, I have that taking 9 minutes longer than our freeway route or 36 minutes. There are a few possibilities for transitioning to Interstate 45 right-of-way in the Willis area. Things are a little sticky through Huntsville, but north of that there is plenty of room to run alongside the freeway even when fronted roads are present. This would be a conventional train with the ability to run most of the distance from Huntsville to Dallas between 110 and 125 miles per hour without much land acquisition. In Dallas, we would transition to Union Pacific right-of-way and take that into Eddie Bernice Johnson Station, which is Dallas's intercity passenger rail station that is also used by DART. That would provide a much better set of stations than Texas Central Suburban Mall in Houston and Elevated Cedars site in Dallas. Apples to apples as a single stop trip, I have that taking 2 hours and 40 minutes. In a more typical Brightline style service with 5 intermediate stops, that would be about 3 hours. Not bad. That's 20 minutes faster than driving and Brightline service from Miami to Orlando. Could something like this be the Houston to Dallas leg on Brightline's 2.0 map? How about just taking over the freeway instead? Should we put Texas on a road diet? Let me know what you think in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this presentation exploring options between Houston and Dallas, ranging from the somewhat practical to the somewhat ridiculous. Plenty more videos to come. I have jury duty coming up, so Stu's news is probably next on the first, but that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you on that big beautiful freeway!